Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. This one is all about uncertainty. I think this is a massive theme for literally everybody right now. And I mean, it doesn't take a very intuitive person to notice that. Um, of course, I'm filming this in September of 2020. So yeah, but I actually feel like kind of the spring of 2020 and the summer was more about the initial shock, uh, like that kind of shocking uncertainty of what is even happening. And I feel like right now, and this is for you, no matter how many years down the line you're watching this, I think we're going to be sitting in uncertainty for quite some time. Um, right now, it's like the quantum gates are open like an actual portal <laughs> to the quantum realm, to the quantum field, to the void, to the ether, however you want to call it, is open. And we're kind of staring into the abyss and realizing that the abyss is staring back. This is like next level uncertainty. And this isn't bad. This is part of our journey. And this is going to eventually help us create a whole <laughs> new world. But right now it is obviously rather unsettling and uncomfortable. And we're all kind of sitting here, I think, feeling confused on a level we've never really felt before and feeling it in all areas of our life. So actually, I haven't made a video in about a week because not because I didn't want to make one, but because I couldn't figure out what video to make. <laughs> And normally I would just kind of tune in and feel what I was guided to make or just what I felt most inspired to make. But I just felt like there were so many options. I couldn't zero in on one. So today, finally this morning, I was sitting around and I just felt like, why don't I just address this head on? Let's just pull some cards and see what the universe has to say about this uncertainty. What's the root cause of it, um, you know, for different people and any little bit of guidance that we might get for handling it as gracefully as possible. Um, I can tell you right away that kind of the overarching message is that we're just going to have to learn to get comfortable or at least okay with this level of uncertainty and that part of our process is going to be learning to, once we get comfortable with it, once we get okay with it, we want to move into gaining confidence in the face of uncertainty, knowing that we can't really mess this up, knowing that no matter what choice we make, no matter what fork in the road we go down, it's going to be okay. And we're just here to have this experience and to enjoy the ride. So go ahead and pick your card. It's just pile one to four, and then we'll get into your specific message. Hey, Paul One, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys have something going on with your community, whatever that means to you, even if you're very much a introvert and very much a kind of hermit type of person, which I know a lot of you are. Um, whatever your family is to you, whatever your community is to you, like even if that's only one other person or even if that's just your home or your connection with nature or, you know, Maybe it is for some of you, you know, your very large extended family or your very intricate friend group or a larger community of a workplace or, you know, the actual social community for some of you who actually participate um, in your human community. There's just that's really emphasized. And I feel like that is what you're feeling uncertain about because you have this eight of bows, which is the hearth fire in this deck. And you have all of these people all hanging out, you know, they have their bows. It's like they just came back from a successful hunt and they're around a bonfire and, you know, they're sharing a cup. This is, this is a, like a family party. This is feeling so good in your community. This is everybody coming together, working for the greater good. And you also have the king of vessels, which would be the king of cups with this heron. And I feel like this is you, you feeling, um, at least maybe at some point in your past or your recent past or right now, or this is your ideal it's very important for you to be part of this community and maybe you're even a central figure of the community, even if you don't know it. 
um, you know, something that just came to mind is when I was a little kid, you know, I was like the most bullied, the most awkward, the most like weird little kid at my, at my school. And, but I always had a couple of really close friends and my teachers used to write weird things on my report cards. They would say that shy is a leader and that she holds her friends together as a group. And I was always like, that's really weird because <laughs> literally my name is shy and I am so awkward and everybody bullies me and hates me. Of course, I'm not a leader, right? I, I'm like the exact opposite of a leader. I, I always felt like nothing, but my teachers really saw in me this, I don't know, potential to be a leader, I guess. And I'm just bringing that example up because even if you don't realize that you are a leader or that you are the kind of hub or linchpin of your community or of your friend group or of your family, uh, that you really are and that it it's since this is vessels this is this cups energy it's your frequency that is holding everybody together um so not necessarily anything you do not necessarily anything you teach or anything like that it's just your your heart energy your heart space is so important to everybody and they can really feel it because just think this king of vessels is a heron herons are solitary birds i don't know if you guys live where there are herons i know they don't live everywhere but you know I really love herons. I see them. I grew up where I grew up. They, there were a lot of them and you could see them flying solitarily and you would see them standing, you know, in some still water, just waiting for a fish to, you know, <laughs> swim by. And they're so solitary, but they just have so much strength and so much power and so much mystery about them. So I love that this king of vessels is, is depicted as a heron because it emphasizes how you can be this hub to your family or you can be this leader in your community while still being this kind of hermit introvert type of person and so where the uncertainty is coming in on all this is that something about your family or your community where there was this level of harmony and feeling of belonging um, for you it's getting completely <laughs> I just thought of the word shipwrecked. It, it's like it's it's getting blasted. This is the blasted oak. Something is coming in to completely rock your foundations. This is the tower card of this deck. Um, luckily, with this particular version of the tower card, you know, it's the blasted oak. It's not quite the tower, right? This is the storm comes through in the forest. And think exactly about what that means when a storm comes blasting through a forest, right? All in the canopy, you know, all the leaves get <laughs> blown off the trees. The pine needles get strewn around in the wind. You know, branches fall off trees. Some trees do get knocked over. Um, you know, there's a lot of damage done, but really, really uh, past that superficial level, the forest cannot be destroyed by a storm. I think I think that's something important for you guys to really remember while you're going through this blasted oak tower moment. Okay, the forest is never destroyed by a storm. There's always, even in the worst, worst, like hurricane or forest fire, there's always roots that were buried deep underground that were not destroyed. And there are always, you know, in the case of a fire, you know, pine cones that were activated by the fire and that will reseed the forest and it will grow again. So it is never fully destroyed and I don't think that you guys are looking at like hurricane or forest fire level of disaster. It's more of just like a really severe storm where the whole forest gets shook up and every, you wake up the next morning and everything is kind of all messed up. But totally like, you know, the trees are still there. The animals come out of their shelters and everything is is going to be OK. But right now the wind is roaring and, you know, you're feeling maybe like a little rabbit hiding under like hiding under a rock during this um, during this storm in the forest and <sighs> this storm, I feel it's coming through to actually give you some space from your community, even though that is making you feel very <laughs> uncertain, even though that is making you feel perhaps a little lonely, perhaps a little separated, you know, maybe you live somewhere right now far away from your friends and family and because of 2020 you can't even travel back home to visit them you know maybe you're not going to make it home for christmas or whatever holiday is important to you you know maybe you know you just started university and you're thinking 
oh, you know, I waited all my life to, you know, be like a partying college person, right? But now you can't even go to a party and you can't go out to the bar. You can't do anything fun, right? There's something separating you from your community and it's making you feel like a boat that's been set adrift in the waves, in the storm, like a boat that has been, you know, this storm in the forest is going on and the boat has like snapped free of its moorings and is like floating in the lake in the waves. And so I feel like that is the foundation of your uncertainty, but there is, as always, a purpose to this, and it is to get you into your own independent alignment. Look at this divine sword. This is the sword of Archangel Michael. Look at this. You got the wings. You got the cosmic heart. Beautiful. This is inviting you to get aligned with all aspects of yourself, and it's vertical alignment. So, you know, your community has been your horizontal alignment, your earth alignment with you know, humans with other humans. This is inviting you to get aligned with whatever higher power you believe in. This would be different for everybody, you know, but, you know, just simply I could say, you know, get in touch with your higher self. I think that applies to basically everybody, no matter what your personal beliefs are. Get in touch with your higher self. Get aligned with that. Because once you are in this boat adrift in the storm, you have no connections none of these lateral connections to other people. You only have yourself to rely on, but of course you always have your higher self to rely on, all the layers of your higher self. Then whatever higher power you believe in, that's higher than your higher self, whether you think of it as source or God or angels or just the universe or just universal consciousness, just whatever it is for you, getting aligned with that, that is where your stability you will download it. You will download your stability and your direction from that. So just getting so, <laughs> so much vertical alignment, that is the only way I can express this. And I feel that once you guys get more comfortable with your vertical alignment, then your kind of 3D reality storm that's going on will start to simmer down because if there's no more if the purpose of the storm is to get you in alignment with your higher self, then once you are aligned with your higher self, the purpose of the storm will have been served and then the storm can subside. So the more you lean into that, the more you lean into walking your spiritual path, whatever your spiritual path is, the sooner your the sooner you will wake up after the storm and realize that it is a fresh, clear, brand new day and everything is beautiful and full of promise. And that's funny. I just said that word promise. And then I looked at this card, which I had not looked at yet. A divine promise. This, look at this. <laughs> this is like another tower, but this isn't a crumbling tower. This isn't a tower moment. This is a lighthouse. This is a lighthouse and it <laughs> it is another vertical alignment, another vertical alignment. And it, there's this light shining out from the peak. So there is a, a light beckoning you and you are being called to move towards it. And this card has a message on the back. Um, as you can see, this isn't really even an oracle card. It's just kind of a card with a channeled message on it. I was just inspired to buy these um, really off the cuff the other day. So let me read this for you. When storms happen and tests appear and you are caught unaware, know that you are fully equipped to handle them. <laughs> it's about storms and I've been talking about storms this whole time and I have not read this card before. I just bought this deck the other day and I have not seen this card yet, so <laughs> just throwing that out there. You are not at the mercy of outside forces. Even as your sense of self is threatened and you want to give up, turn towards the light. It will shine out of you in a way that you least expect. Knowledge will spill forth and wisdom will arise and reveal a pathway ahead. Hold steady and aim towards the truth of your being. Doubt can no longer keep you from reaching your highest destination. Take hold of your inherent holiness. Even if you feel uneasy at first and feel strengthened by knowing that a love greater than all of this world is living through you. 
Wow, guys. <laughs> I repeat, I literally had not looked at or read this card at all. I knew nothing about it before, um, before just now. So <laughs> I am kind of at a loss for words about how synchronous this is. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I don't have anything else to add that just said it all. So I'm going to leave it at that for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and just sending you so much light while you navigate your path through the storm. Hope to see you guys again. Bye. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. The bottom of your guys' deck is the hanged man, which makes me laugh because we're talking about uncertainty and what is more uncertain than, you know, hanging upside down from a tree. <laughs> just a swing in there. The hanged man is always just that. Waiting while you go deep within to find new wisdom. So yeah, and it's it's really funny. Your entire spread is just one card after another that emphasizes how much you guys are in this quantum gate. Okay, you got the fool, which is that zero. You are zeroing out. And I really think 2020 is like a, it's like a zero year where everything is null. Everything is completely undefined and waiting to grow into something new. So <laughs> that's you guys with the full. And then seven of cups. Seven of cups is all about uncertainty. It is having too many choices and not knowing which choice is best for you. Um, just, and also the seven of cups is having your imagination run away with you, thinking that your choices are kind of like more important than they really are, feeling that almost like catastrophizing, going, oh my God, if I make the wrong choice, then I'm going to end up dead, <laughs> you know? Really, like, uh, especially like anybody who has who was experiencing a lot of anxious racing thoughts, you can catastrophize any thought going, you know, if I make the wrong choice or if I do this thing, yada, 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 all these things will happen, one thing will lead to another, and then someone's dead, or then there's some kind of tragedy. Uh, like, I'm not exaggerating, right? You, we've all had those thoughts where we just kind of, no matter what we think of it ends up in some kind of catastrophe so <laughs> yeah this is just more uncertainty and even your third tarot card here the page of wands pages are you know a little childlike they're a little naive a little uncertain because they're just starting out fresh you know they're like a freshman in university or in, in college freshman that's an american word um i know i might sound american but i'm canadian um so it's weird that I just said the word freshman because we don't say that, at least in the area of Canada that I am from. But <laughs> So Page of Wands is like a first year university student or like a freshman in college, as the Americans say. So, <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> um, I, I think that the, all of this comes back to this hanged man. I feel like you guys have been in some kind of deep, deep, deep period of transition and transformation but it's even beyond that it's like being in a metaphysical cocoon that you have just been um almost feeling maybe a little frozen in time and feeling like even like you're having an identity crisis or that you just you don't even know how to express your authenticity anymore not knowing who you are not knowing what you want maybe you've made your you're considering or you're already making massive shifts in your career or in your family life, or in where you live, just, <laughs> um, it, for you guys, it is like, it's probably happening for you on multiple levels. M many, many different things are shifting in your life all at once, and you're kind of just, I don't even know if you guys are in shock about it, it it's almost like you're just at a loss for words, right? Kind of numbed out to it or just staring into the abyss, just kind of waiting to fall into it. Um, you, you guys have just so many different potentials waiting for you. And <laughs> I think the message here is that 
that's just how how it is for you right now. You are in this massive pocket of uncertainty because of because you're doing literally energetic work on the inside on a soul level. You are downloading codes, you are receiving upgrades, you are communicating with your soul family and your guides in your dream time like this is all about a massive internal shift and you're worrying about how to apply that to your physical life, but you can't figure it out and that's fine. You're not supposed to figure it out right now. It, it, <laughs> right now, your only priority is your own inner work, your own internal processes because you guys are massively like recoding your consciousness. You could wake up feeling like a brand new person feeling maybe even like you've betrayed your past self or just that you don't even know who you are <laughs> anymore um like you could be having a massive spiritual awakening right now it's the <laughs> uh, i would expect to to kind of feel this for quite some time this could go on for several months um and just know that it is okay. It's actually normal to be feeling like this. Um, it's part of your journey. You just have to try and find a little bit of okayness, like feeling okay with the fact that you're <laughs> experiencing what it's like to be quantum. There, There is nothing here for you to do or for you to know or for you to understand besides just feeling into how unpredictable everything can be. All you can do at this point is take it one day at a time. And maybe that's even too much. Take it one moment at a time. You could be sitting there, you could wake up in the morning and go, I don't even know what I'm going to do today. I can't figure out what I can do. And you could be feeling like in a crisis about really silly little things. Like, should I walk my dog? Should I not walk my dog? Should I call my mom and see how she's doing or should I not call her right should I eat a sandwich or not like you could be feeling in crisis about the minutia of your day um and you know if you wake up in the morning and you can't figure out what you're going to do for dinner that night don't think that far ahead literally just think well what you're going to do right now in this moment and don't I mean don't even think about it just follow your body's um your body's direction if you're sitting there in a complete if you're sitting there feeling like you're in the void, no idea of how to proceed, just literally just sit down, take a few deep breaths, and just feel into, <laughs> into the void. Just feel that there is like a void space around you. Actually, look at this. Create. I had my eyes closed when I was saying that, but look at this. Create a space. Create the void. Um, I... <laughs> Maybe that doesn't make any sense, but I think you guys on an energetic level kind of know what I'm saying. Create the void around you. Create space. You need to actually be in the emptiness right now. That is part of your part of your journey right now is to just find finding your getting comfortable with sitting in nothingness, with sitting in emptiness, with being in the void. You need to create this empty space for yourself because it is an energetic container for you to go through this transformative process. It's like you're being reborn from the inside out. Your whole energetic, all of your energy bodies are being, and your DNA even are being like recoded <laughs> from the inside out. So you can't be interacting with your environment too much, especially with people too much, especially with people who know you from your past. Because they will, if you're ch you're changing so much and you're really opening yourself up to entirely new worlds, entirely new possibilities, entirely new ways of being. And if you're like every day, every day, every day talking to people who like knew you from high school and then they'll be projecting their expectations on you. They'll be literally projecting your past self onto you and that'll like mess you up, right? You want to be feeling into your pure potentiality, your <laughs> all you, you want to be feeling into the seven of cups you want to be feeling into all of your potentials and just knowing that they are all there and knowing that you will eventually you know find your way into your path and you don't want to have your past especially other people's perceptions of your past self you don't want them messing you up and kind of 
because they'll nudge you they'll nudge you in a certain direction and maybe that direction isn't the direction that you ultimately want to go in and i mean you don't don't worry too much about messing this up that's not the point here it's just that if you're in this moment of uncertainty and this this moment of the quantum possibilities you may as well get as much out of that as you can and you don't want other people you know affecting your authenticity by kind of sticking their forks in there and nudging you in a direction you you want to be tuning into your your own most authentic direction so sit in the void literally just sit there and feel into the emptiness around you feel that there is nothing around you nothing around you pushing you in a certain direction no expectations no structures no nothing just feel into the space feel into the emptiness I, d I know this is kind of a weird message and might not make any sense but <laughs> it is what it is and uh, i think you guys can feel into what i'm talking about so that only leaves this card which i have never seen before this is a brand new deck for me it's not even really an oracle deck it's just a deck of cards with channeled messages on the back so let's see what we have here speak it into being as you can see this part there's just a chair <laughs> here sitting in an empty field and it looks like there was a person here right or there could be a person here any minute it's an empty chair but there's a sweater and a mug and some books somebody has been sitting there um i think really just enjoying the peace and the quiet but right now the chair is empty which means it is an invitation for anybody to come and take their place here i feel like you guys are kind of like the empty chair you might feel that your vessel like your body your vessel is a little empty and that is because you're going to be <laughs> receiving a new type of consciousness downloading a new configuration of your own consciousness it's like you were in this chair you got up to go for a swim in the ocean and in the ocean um your consciousness is getting reconfigured in a new more exciting more resonant more optimal way and when you come back to sit in the chair you're going to be brand new so let's see what this message on the back is speak words of jubilant affirmation into your life you can create happiness through an inner state of mind first practice by repeating to yourself i accept good in every form or i am well loved or everything works out for me in planning for your future start where you find yourself right now outer circumstances do not have to define you experiment with how different thoughts affect your well-being dismiss words that amplify suffering and misfortune cast aside the illusion of fate the belief that your life is predetermined if you do so you are no longer living in what could have been but rather you are entering into possibilities of what you can become yeah <laughs> yes that exactly so that card I just saw 444, four, four, by the way. That card uh, confirms what I was saying about not letting your external environment prod you down a specific path, getting okay with your space and your uncertainty, and then it gives you a little bit of direction there um, about how you can deal with the Seven of Cups, actually. Um, tune into your most resonant most interesting most fascinating most loved future right curate your vibration always figure out what is your ideal future what is your ideal world just feel into it and then affirm those things so this is not the time to be worrying about all the bad things that are happening this is not the time to be like stressing out or worrying about anything this is the time to be putting your rational mind to rest and to be feeling into the things that make you most joyous most happy most peaceful most at home identify those feelings you don't even need to figure out what would make you happy or what would make you feel at home or what would make you feel at peace just identify those feelings and affirm that you already feel those feelings and of course everybody will kind of 
do those affirmations in their own way, whether that is literally just repeating affirmations, whether that is meditating on a specific feeling, um, whether that is writing it down, doing um, witchcraft, spells, whatever, listening to music, going out in nature, whatever it is, uh, find a way to cultivate your most ideal states of consciousness and feel into those. And that is all you need to be doing. And But that is why you need to create that space, why you need to create that void space around you, because that way you will be left alone with your own vibrations and the own your vibrations that you create, and then they will ripple out into the void around you and then ultimately into the collective and help everybody. That is why you need your space right now and you need to not be worrying about um, interacting with others so much because you're in like a massive introversion cocoon <laughs> right now. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Good luck in this moment and try to really soak it up. We don't often get, you know, a long span of time to just exist in the void. And if you can figure out how to enjoy that, or if you can identify the things about that that are enjoyable for you, this can be so awesome. You can just sit and breathe for an entire day and love every second of it. So good luck, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys were in a very comfortable, happy situation and that somebody or something depends, right? Just some energy came in and kind of fucked all your shit up. And now you're kind of sitting there going, oh my God, what just happened? Why is this happening? What do I do now? And I get that because this three of cups and in, in this deck, it is subtexted with abundance, right? This is, look, this is community. This is flow. This is happiness. This is fulfillment. It, like, and I think this is where you were at kind of before, in the before time, as people say now, right? In the before time, I feel like you guys actually, you know, it's not like your life was perfect or anything like that, but that you had a certain level of comfort and stability. You know, you had enough of everything and you felt pretty, pretty good about where you were at, right? You were, you know, you were having a hot, like a, a high tide moment. Everything was just pretty good. And, you know, you kind of wish you could still be like that. But then in came this Knight of Wands. And I don't always see the Knight of Wands as a negative energy, or I don't typically actually, but look at this one. It's so full. It's like so fiery, right? So fiery that I think this, this energy, whatever this Knight of Wands was for you, like came in like a fiery wind, right? Like, like a firestorm and really kind of just upended things, really burnt, maybe burnt something to the ground. Um, you know, maybe you feel like you've got some burns, right? Like so something happened, you know, for some of you, this, this could have been a person that just out of nowhere, uh, turned out to be it's totally not who you thought they were. You know, you realized, wow, this person is really here to, um, spread negative energy and to really harm people. Or maybe you had some kind of you know, kind of catastrophe, you know, if that's you or a family member falling ill or having something stupid happen with your landlord and you have to move, you know, or just the ripple effects um, and, find, and, you know, and suddenly being in like really financial, like having a financial problem, you know, whatever it is, this Knight of Wands, just look at this card, this fire blew in and I feel like it really upended your life. And now, here you are, the hanged man, feeling like everything is completely turned upside down and you are feeling like you're groping in the dark, trying to figure out anything. Like you, you don't know what's happening <laughs> to you. And I think deep down, you know, deep down on your, in your inner self, you understand that you need to find a new perspective that that that's actually what this is about, that, you know, maybe when you were sitting in that three of cups um, with everything being pretty good, you know, maybe you had known all along that it couldn't last or that it wasn't, at, that wasn't actually your highest manifestation. You know, maybe if you were in a relationship, um, even if it was happy and fulfilling on some levels and loving, you kind of knew all along that this person 
wasn't your true love of of your, you know, wasn't really the love of your life, right? I think most of us have been in relationships that are good or fulfilling or happy or loving and just generally good to be in. And, you know, you think, I don't really want to break up with this person because everything's just good. But deep down, you know, so maybe that relationship goes on for a few years longer than it should have because you, because it's just good, right? And you're happy. But all along, deep, deep, deep down, you know, your soul was kind of whispering to you, you know, that there's more out there. There was something more. And I think that is why if you can kind of understand that, that even though, or, you know, it, obviously it's not a relationship for all of you, but just take that and apply it to whatever area of your life it is, whether it was a job that was, you know, good, but, you know, not not the best, you know, or just your your whole life situation, right? Your whole life situation was good, but it wasn't the best, you know, and since it was highly unlikely for you to just upend your whole life, you know, break up with that person or quit your job or make that move or make that internal spiritual shift, whatever it was, you were highly unlikely to do that on your own because why would you mess with a good thing, right? If everything was kind of just going along nicely, even if you knew that on some level you could manifest a much, much more um, resonant world you probably weren't going to because we don't want to mess with a good thing, right? It's like, okay, even if I could go through all this upheaval and get to a better world, why would I bother when I, I can be happy enough as I am? So this hanged man, I think that's actually what you need to do. You need to shift your perception about this catastrophe or this disaster or this shift that you've gone through, right? This knight of wands, even if this energy really sucked and really burned you and really upended your life, um, in the long run, you're going to be led to a much, much more resonant, much, much more abundant, much, much more love-filled, um, satisfying world on so many levels that that's going to make all of this worth it. It's like instead of the three of cups, you're going to get to the ten of cups, right? That's exactly what this is like. You could have just, you probably would have just stayed in the three of cups forever, even though you knew the ten of cups was out there, but you just didn't know how to get there, or you were doubting that you could get there, doubting yourself, doubting your abilities, doubting the universe and its willingness to manifest the ten of cups for you. But it's kind of been taken out of your hands because this energy came in to rattle your world, but now you can reach out to that ten of cups, to that perfect that perfect world you know the land of milk and honey that is where you can get to so while you're sitting in this hanged man energy of feeling like you're groping in the dark um try to gain that perspective the hanged man is typically about changing your perspective, gaining a new perspective, gaining even the opposite perspective, right? So if you felt like this was nothing but a disaster and it did nothing but destroy your life, the opposite perspective that you'll find once you hang upside down is that, wow, okay, yes, this was traumatic and yes, this was a massive shift, but it is instead of being the disaster that ruined my life in the long run, like 10 years from now, I'm going to look back and go, wow, that was the miracle that transformed my life into this beautiful just landscape of satisfaction that it is now, right? Completely change your perspective. And that is what will lead you to this time of healing. I think this Knight of Wands, this fire energy, probably brought up a lot of like deep-seated baggage and trauma so a lot of what you're feeling bubbling up is like your soul sludge like that's that sludge that sits at the bottom of everybody's consciousness that we don't like to deal with you know past life traumas childhood traumas just all of your all of your baggage and bullshit right it's sitting down there and then when the firestorm comes through it bubbles it all up and then we have to deal with it so that's what you're doing right now you're working on healing all of that and Maybe that's why you couldn't manifest your Ten of Cups perfect land of milk and honey before is because you had all of this baggage. But once you purge all of this and you heal all of it, then you're going to be able to, <laughs> you know, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit because you'll come out fresh and pure and clean and healed. And then you won't have this baggage like subconsciously, subliminally dragging you down. You'll be free to fly as high as you can fly, right? 
And this card here is not really even an Oracle card. It is a card with a channeled message on it. And I actually just got this deck. I don't know anything about it. So I'm looking at this card first time with you. And it says a day away from it all. We have somebody just taking a break, <laughs> going fishing, right? And oh, that, that, you know, if that's what you need in order to heal, if you need to just take a time out, if you have been really fixated on coping with this shift you're going through and trying to figure out how to proceed, you can just let that all go and just try to have a day off. <laughs> That's literally what this is, a day away from it all. Take a day off and enjoy the moment, right? Maybe you haven't had a chance to enjoy the moment in a long time. And maybe once you really focus on what it is that you enjoy, maybe you don't even know what you like anymore because you've been so busy. <laughs> or, and then even if you haven't been busy lately, you've been busy worrying, right? So if you can take a day off from your own mind, then you find out what you actually enjoy. And that is how you will find out how you can move forward. So let's see what this message is. Today is yours and tomorrow is coming as it will. Yesterday is complete with all its learning and lessons. You can rest now and embody this moment's embrace. Feel yourself supported by it as you step away from your daily tasks. Give your full attention to your body, mind, and soul while infusing each moment with thoughtfulness around your true needs. Let your soul rest from the myriad of voices that are vying for your attention. Be still. Return to nature and share the silence like two old trusted friends who, just by being together, soothe each other's tired hearts. Renewed and strengthened by your time away, joy will return, and with it, the clarity and energy that is naturally within you. Yeah, guys, that, <laughs> that is your main piece of advice from the universe here. I couldn't, I can't say it better than that. Take a day off, take a time out, sit in silence, sit in stillness, which is what you're doing because of this hanged man. And that is how you will heal. And that is how you will become much more clear on how you want to build your new world as we come out of this pocket of uncertainty. So that's what I'm seeing for you, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. You guys are very spiritually advanced, whether you know it or not. Even if you are just at the beginning of your spiritual awakening or reawakening or whatever it is for you, you guys have a lot of potential deep down in your soul. You are part of a soul group who came here with a, like, a spiritual mission. And I mean, there are all different kinds of spiritual missions, including ones that don't seem spiritual, right? It could be somebody's mm -hmm. spiritual mission to develop a video game or be the world's best soccer player or be a parent, you know, whatever. But well, for you guys, I mean, your mission is literally to be spiritual, <laughs> like to be some kind of spiritual leader, some kind of spiritual teacher, some kind of healer. Like your m part, part of your mission is to Explore your spirituality in your own unique individual way as much as you can and then to share it with others in whatever way is most resonant for you. You know, this is so varied, but the point is that, you know, it's like hard to make myself clear because there are so many different ways this can manifest, but I do mean something within a specific like region of bandwidth. It's like you guys have had many, many lives you know, you have been witches, you have been priests, you have been priestesses, you have been like oracles, you have been, you know, tarot readers, you have been, it's it's like part of your soul's blueprint is to be a, a spiritual channel, a spiritual conduit, you know, 
Do you guys know what I mean? You guys know what I mean because it's because it's you. This is this is who you are and this is what you do and this is what you've done over and over again in all of your lives. I think, you know, the vast majority, maybe not all of them, but most of them um you have had some kind of theme about being an initiate and being a spiritual explorer and this is you know eventually going to be the focal point of your entire life journey <laughs> and so i think you guys are actually feeling pretty okay with this pocket of uncertainty already of course you're still feeling it but because of your level of spiritual advancement if we can say that or just you know your experience in past lives and in this life and just your you know you guys are into this kind of stuff you guys are into it you <laughs> i think you guys you know get what i'm talking about so you're already kind of aware you know you can identify these pockets of energy and even if you're just new at this you're still doing it subconsciously and you know you still know about this on some level so you guys already are were aware that we're in this pocket of uncertainty. You could feel it within yourself. You could identify it and you could go, okay, I just need to get okay with it. So I think you guys already are okay with it. And all of your cards are like so introverted and so uh, emphasize your personal development and like how you're cultivating your own inner light and how you are just so it's, I would say that you're being called to walk your spiritual path, but it's like you guys are already doing it. You're, it's not like you're being called. It's like you're, you're already doing it. <laughs> so let's see if I can get a little bit more specific here. Like, first of all, I don't know why I drew four tarot cards. I only drew three for everybody else. Like the, none of these are the bottom of the deck. The bottom of your deck was the two of pentacles. So yeah, I mean, we got a bonus card here, I guess. <laughs> wheel of fortune i think to me recently you guys have had like a leveling up in your consciousness like you reconnected to a higher level of consciousness um you know that you were severed from you know for at least at least the rest of you know your previous life this life journey you were disconnected from this level of consciousness until just recently Recently, you made that reconnection. It's like you've been through the portal. The wheel has turned. And, you know, it's this wheel, but really the wheel is a spiral. So whenever you feel like you've made one whole circuit of the wheel, you know, really you're spiraled out. So even if you're in the same spot, you're farther out on your journey. It's not, it's never quite the same. So... Something about your consciousness has expanded or leveled up. And even if you feel like you are not making any progress, be really aware of how subtle the changes are. And don't get too frustrated with yourself if you feel like you're moving backwards or falling off the wagon. Um, like a weird example coming to mind is... I used to drink like way too much, <laughs> okay? And um, over the past year or two, I've just naturally stopped drinking. It wasn't something I had to work at um, or anything. I just, my tolerance slowly just decreased and I just lost interest in drinking, which was really fascinating because I used to always be waiting, like, you know, oh, like, when is it going to be Friday so I can finally get drunk? Because I just, I couldn't handle being alive and I just wanted to get drunk because that was the only way I could enjoy myself. And so while I've been going through my spiritual awakening, uh, my interest in alcohol has just like petered out. And, you know, a, a few days ago, um, I felt like having a beer. And so I had a beer and then I had a second beer. And it was funny because I got drunk off of two beers, which was hilarious to me because back back in the day, like when I was in university, <laughs> two beers, I wouldn't even notice that I had anything to drink. And now I can get drunk off of two beers, uh, apparently. And so the point of this story is that, you know, um, on like a little small part of me felt guilty. I was like, oh, you know, I've like fallen off the wagon, even though, you know, I'm not trying to be sober. I'm not actually trying to not drink, but it's just that I do it so rarely now that I had that little bit of feeling of going, oh, you know, I messed up. Oh, I shouldn't have had those drinks. I should have been, you know, more righteous. I should have been more on the straight and narrow. I just, I should have just sat around and meditated instead of drinking two beers. But it's funny because, 
you know, okay, so I fell off the wagon, so to speak, but all I did was have two beers, right? It's not like I went out and had 10 shots and ended up, you know, passed out in a bush, right? <laughs> so like back in the day when I drank a lot, when if I like went off the deep end and had too much to drink, it would have been like way too much to drink. And, but now if I, you know, kind of fell off the wagon and had a couple of drinks, it's literally just having a couple of drinks. So can you, you guys can see how it can feel that I took a step back. It can feel like I was repeating old patterns, but really look how much like better it, the, it like it is now. Look like, it's not like I did 10 shots when I, you know, flubbed up on a Friday night and drank too much. It's like, no, I had two beers. That was it. That's not, <laughs> that's hardly anything. That's not bad at all. So I think something like that for you guys, you might feel like you fell off some kind of wagon and that, or that you're repeating some kind of past pattern, but just notice that even if you did the same sort of thing, you did it in a better way or like a less extreme way. Um, and that is the subtle differences. It's like, stretching dough if you're trying to expand your consciousness it's like stretching dough like imagine you're making pizza you stretch the dough out and then immediately the dough starts shrinking back right so you have to let it rest and then you stretch the dough out again and that time it goes a little farther but then it shrinks back but the dough never shrinks back to be as small as it was before it just keeps you know you expand it and then it contracts and you expand it and it contracts again but never as small as it was so pretty abstract, but I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Just, I think that message is don't feel, don't judge yourself too harshly. Don't feel guilty and don't worry if old patterns are coming back up. It's fine. Even if you did something stupid that you wish you hadn't have done, you still didn't do it as, as extremely or as badly as you would in the past. So yeah, I feel like four of cups and now you're sitting here trying to get re-centered, whatever, whatever. I feel like that wheel was actually kind of chaotic for you guys because it came with, I know I talked about two entirely different things, right? I talked about your consciousness expanding and you downloading uh, like or connecting to a new level of consciousness, but then also repeating some kind of past patterns. So it's like you had something really amazing happened and then you did something that you might have felt kind of silly about, right? You did something that you feel was kind of silly and now you're trying to get re-centered. This four of cups. Sitting under this pyramid, you guys are so, look at this, activating your transpersonal chakras and downloading all of this information and it is all fine. It is all wonderful because nine of cups, this is your wish come true this is you being in divine alignment and in divine flow and feeling like this beautiful being right here, surrounded by all of this water and joy and high frequency feelings. And I think about this nine of cups, it is also like a very personal thing. It is very individual. And I mean, just look at this, uh, you know, that person on the four of cups meditating, right? By themselves, individual. So you guys are really sitting in your own energy with this hermit as well. It's emphasized again. I think what this is about is learning to craft your own patterns, craft your own spiritual experience, this soul craft card. You guys are probably very curious about a lot of spiritual things. I think, I mean, you guys are star seeds, whether you guys <laughs> know it or not. Um, I'll just throw that out there. So you guys are curious about the universe, about the galaxy, about source, about the beyond, about the void. You guys are massively, massively curious and you want to get connected to higher dimensional collectives. You guys want to step into your role as this spiritual 
leader. I don't really like that word. It's not really about being a leader, but I don't know what else, what other word to use. You, you, you guys know that it is part of your blueprint to be this spiritual person and to serve in a spiritual capacity. And maybe I, I feel like you're kind of looking for some direction going like, how do I learn to be a trance channel? How do I learn to be like super, super psychic and, you know, do remote viewing? How do I learn to be a medium and have conversations with passed on spirits? How, like, <laughs> I feel like you guys are really searching for something, really searching for a modality, um, for like a healing modality, or really, really searching for a way to level up your practice and searching for a way to level up your, your ability to manifest. You're just so curious and like spiritually ambitious because you, you remember this. It's in your soul. You know that you're here to do this. And the message here is that you don't, <laughs> unfortunately, you're not really going to find that many satisfying answers or direction from other people. You know, if you're, if you've been kind of looking around going, huh, maybe there's like a energy healing class I can take, or I can get certified as this, as an intu, like, you know, there's so many, so many, you go on the internet of different types of courses um, like spiritual courses, right? To teach you how to be a healer or to teach you how to be more spiritual or how to teach you to be more psychic. And you maybe have a passing interest in that because you're looking for answers, but you don't, not only do you not need that, that's really not part of your path because <laughs> you are here to remember your own soul gifts remember your own talents. Remember how you were a healer in past lives. Remember how you were a channel in past lives. Remember how you worked magic in your past lives. You have your own unique, unique abilities and your own unique way of using those abilities. And the only way, well, you know, you're being called, you know, to get in touch with only your own soul's expression of your spiritual, psychic healing abilities, you know, what, whatever, whatever it really is for you. So it's your own soul craft, right? Your soul craft. You cannot find the answers from somebody else, honestly, because <laughs> it it's like they are less experienced than you. You know, they only know if you find some teacher, even if they're really well respected or even if you really resonate with them, they don't know what your soul knows. They have their own way of doing things. You need to look into your own soul, get in touch with your own higher self and start working through your own past mem past life memories to unlock all of these things for yourself because that is the only way that you can truly offer your highest service to the world in this capacity of being a being of service in a spiritual capacity. Put it that way. And I think, yeah, because of this card here, the long way around. I got this card for myself the other day. So <laughs> that's why I know you guys are starseeds, whether you know it or not, because this is definitely the group I feel most resonant with myself. And I think you guys are really working through similar energies that I'm going through right now. Um, I've been feeling rather pressured to do things to find specific ways of doing things. I think, okay, I need to create this kind of structure. I need to create certain kind of habits or I need to do this so many times a day or this so many times a week. But I just keep, especially lately, I just keep feeling that I just need more rest. I need more space. I need more time doing nothing um, because that is how I will really, you know, have the time and the chance and the energy to do the inner work I need in order to unlock all of these you know, to unlock my soul craft, right? You can't, you can't remember your soul craft if you are too busy kind of fulfilling just like all of these imposed schedules on yourself. Even if you are in, like creating your own schedule, like creating your own expectations, you know, even the ones you put on yourself can be ha hampering you. And this card comes through to say, Everything is happening in perfect cosmic timing. You are not messing this up. You cannot really mess this up. There's nothing you can do that will mess this up because you guys are missioned souls. You guys came here with a spiritual purpose. And 
you have all of the codes codes inside of you you have all of the connections with your galactic guides with your higher self of all of these higher dimensional collectives so much support so much guidance you can't you literally can't mess this up even if you feel like you've gone astray like i was talking about earlier you know maybe you wish you hadn't have you know gotten drunk that night maybe you feel like that messed up your spiritual path well i mean it didn't you know it didn't there's nothing you can do to mess this up because you are you are here to thrive and to do this and so you really need to trust in your own personal timing you really need to trust in doing everything exactly when you are inspired to do so and never at any other moment. Let me read you this. Are you worried that by going at your own pace, you won't realize your heart's yearnings? Part of your inner debate may very well include the needs or emotions of others. You may feel that you are inadequate whenever you fall short of their expectations. However, now and then, your soul will express an imposing need for tranquility that others may not understand. Therefore, begin by taking notice of the ebb and flow of your natural emotional and bodily rhythms. When you acknowledge your natural impulse to slow down, you will intuit how best to seize the moment. Be of service to the people in need around you. Or attend to yourself and do whatever you feel, need, feel needs doing. Allow moments of sweetness to arise while in the thicket of responsibility. A deep soul calling is inviting you to consider parts of your day as time for just being. I think that sums this up much better and more concisely than I possibly can. So I think... I will leave it at that. I guess just, you know, to the final reminder, just to sum this up is <laughs> take time to be yourself and nothing but yourself. Only do what is most inspiring to you. Only do it when it feels most inspiring for you. And trust in your soul that you cannot mess this up and that everything you do is in perfect alignment because you are in perfect alignment everything you do will unfold in perfect timing and in perfect flow you guys do not need to worry about this it will unfold perfectly because you guys are some of my deepest soul family you guys came here with a mission you didn't come here to mess it up. You came here to do it perfectly. And that's what's going to happen. So it was wonderful to connect with you guys. It was a privilege and a pleasure. And just sending you so much love and light. Talk to you guys later. Bye.